Okay, so we talk about batteries and wires all the time. Uh, so let's just think about a simple example. This is a double A battery. Look, I'll even write it on here. Double A. See, it even says double A right on there. Double A battery. And this is a wire. Uh, let's just say that this has a resistance. So let's say we have uh, EMF of 1.5 volts. That's the that's what these AA batteries are. Um, and then this wire, let's say, has a resistance of 0 0.1 ohms. I'm not sure exactly what it is. This is a, uh, it's not it's not nichrome, but it's not copper either. So it does have a higher resistance than a normal copper wire. So let's just say it's 0.1, just for now. So if I take this and I connect it like this, if you do that, uh, you're going to find out that this wire actually gets hot, um, but if you just do it really quick, it doesn't. It, you can handle it. Okay. So in that case, what would the current through that wire be? Well, let's just draw this as a simple circuit. Uh, so here I have my battery, and then I have uh, super wires connected to my 0 0.1 ohm resistor, and that's my EMF. So the loop rule says that delta V loop equals zero, and that would be EMF F minus IR equals zero. So if I solve for I, I get I equals EMF over R, so that would be 1.5 volts over 0 0.1 ohms. And I can actually do that in my head without using Python, and I get 15 amps. Okay, let me tell you, you don't have a lot of experience with current, but and it's not quite the same because it's different voltage, but 15 amps is a serious amount of current. Um, you know, like a vacuum cleaner running on in your house, which is completely different, but that's going to be around you know, maybe 10 amps. Okay, so this is serious stuff. And in fact, you don't even get that. You can't get that kind of current out of this battery. It just doesn't happen. Okay, so why? Well, let's think about this uh, capacitor plate model of a battery. So let's say that we have this is our battery. It's actually a parallel plate capacitor. I should have made it further apart. I'm going to do that. Make it further apart. So this capacitor, I have a negative and a positive side. So this has negative charges on it. And this has positive charges on it. Now, if I hook this up to a resistor, then the negative, it'd be the electrons. The negative charges would move through the resistor and up here. And if, if I left it alone, then this would become discharged. And we're going to do that problem, just not right now. But this battery doesn't become discharged right away. And in fact, what happens is we can think of this, and I stole this idea from uh, Bruce Sherwood and Bruce Shabai's Matter and Interactions book, but it's a really good model. It says, hey, look, what if we have this? What if there's inside here, there's a conveyor belt? And this conveyor belt takes negative charges from that side of the plate and brings them over there and just keeps on adding charges over there as much as it can. Uh, so once these charges leave, then this conveyor belt brings extra charges and puts them over there. What's really happening, this is a chemical reaction. This is a chemical battery. So there's a chemical reaction that does this. And these are two different metals with the chemical, and it transports charges to one side. But if I have a current that's too high, then these charges are leaving the plate faster than the charges can move over here. And then I don't get the current that I would expect. One way to model this is with the idea of internal resistance. So let's say that we have our battery, and, I, and it's not super important, but it is real life. So here's my battery. I'm going to draw it big. And here's the bump is the plus side. And uh, I can hook it up to a resistor, R1. We can model this as though it has a uh, ideal battery inside of it, along with a resistor R internal. 
So that R internal, uh, let's see how that would work. Let's say R internal for this is equal to uh, 0 0.4 ohms. So if I hook this up to a 0 0.1 ohm resistor, then this is still 1.5 volts. Now if I do the loop rule, delta V loop equals 0, I get 1. 1.5 minus I R internal minus I R1. So this is the same as saying uh, 1.5 volts equals I times I internal plus R1. And so this is going to be 1.5 volts equals I. If I add these two together, I get 0.5. You see I picked something that was easy. 0.5 ohms, so I would be 1.5 volts over 0.5 ohms, at ah, ohms, and this would give me 3 amps, not 15, okay, because of that extra resistor in there. And in fact, if I put in a superconductor with zero uh, resistance, I still would get uh, a current that's not infinity. If you don't have internal, if you don't have this model for a battery, you could get an infinite, resi infinite current out of that. That means you could take uh, this battery, which is 1.5 volts, if I have eight of them, that would give me, that is eight, right? 12 volts. So if I take eight of these in series, uh, just one after the other, like this, eight of them, that'd be 12 volts. And could I use that to start my car? Your car is a 12 volt battery. And the answer is no, because the, the car battery uses a very uh, high current to get that starter motive started. I don't know what it is. I'm going to say 5 amps or something. I'm just going to guess. Okay. But if each one of these has an internal resistance of, let's say, 0.4 ohms, and you get 8 of them together, then you're going to get a significant internal resistance, and you're not going to get that 5 amps of current out of there. So that's why we can't do that. Um, typically, if you take a the difference between this battery and a D-cell battery is the D-cell battery has one, it has more energy stored in it, and it usually has a lower internal resistance too. Okay, but this idea of internal resistance is important when we talk about uh, something I want to talk about. So you know, everything's related to something else. So I'm going to talk about using a real battery to light an LED bulb, and we'll do that in another video.